Well, I'm joined by Chris Greeley, who is the head of North American Esports at Riot Games, uh, to discuss a very exciting announcement. I don't know when this video is going to hit. We're doing it under embargo beforehand, and I think there's a bit of a moving target a little bit on it. But hopefully this is hitting right around the same time as a pretty big announcement of a project you guys have been working on. So uh, first off, Chris, thanks uh, for joining me. What is what is the big thing you guys are announcing today? So uh, it is a, a TV show called Players. It is a comedic documentary style series uh, that'll be released on Paramount Plus. Uh, it's sort of produced in the style of The Last Dance. So think Michael Jordan. Uh, it follows a fictional pro League of Legends team uh, as it attempts to win its first LCS title uh, after years of failure. Um, it is produced, well, it's, uh, it, it's from the duo that brought, uh, the Netflix show American Vandals. So it's, uh, Dan Peralt and Tony Yacenda. Hopefully I didn't hack their last names. I just kind of know them as, as Dan and Tony, uh, but they're the co-creators, the executive producers, and, uh, they've been working with, uh, with us at Riot Games and we've reached across to the LCS teams who are going to be kind of lending their, their brands and their, their logos, uh, to the show to add a little bit of realism for us. And I, I should ask immediately because I know how much of the audience that uh, watches this stuff are, are into animation. I assume this is live action. Yeah, this is this is live action. Live action. OK, uh, well, obviously, this is a, a really exciting and, and interesting thing. So just to clarify on some stuff, uh, it is not a, a documentary. It is like a scripted narrative show. It's not going to be because obviously we've seen time and time again. Yep. Obviously, fantastic work has been done telling stories of actual players in the LCS and actual teams. This is not that, right? No, this is this is not that. This is a, a fictional team uh, with fictional players kind of playing in a fictionalized, not to not to overuse the word, fictionalized version of the kind of LCS and LOL esports universe. Okay, so... This has been fun uh, for me as I've, as I've heard pieces and rumors over the past uh, couple months. But I, it's actually funny because whenever I finally found out about this right before we did the uh, the interview, I, I had a flashback to like either early 2020 or maybe 2019 when I remember hearing like, oh, that's one of the American Vandal guys. And they were either at like a finals or at the studio or something. So uh, if I recall correctly, and I'm not crazy, this is not something that's a new thing you guys have been working on it seems like conversations have probably been going for a while yeah yeah so the 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 uh showrunners have been sort of deep in the league of legends world for like two and a half three years they've been at a bunch of finals they've been at a bunch of lcs arena shows um dan who's, who's one of the the two co-creators uh sat with me in detroit uh up in up kind of in the in the nosebleed seats as we watched and we kind of chatted through but he spent a bunch of time with folks in the in the community um, you know, we've had uh, some writers from the LCS who were in the writer's room with them. Uh, you know, we've handed the script off to our some of our uh, casters and analysts for comments. And, you know, they're kind of working through a pretty long list of consultants to make sure at the end of the day, they get to tell the story they want to tell, but that it reflects really well on the world that, you know, we all spend our time in and want to make sure like that, you know, the big fear with a, with a project like this is that it turns out like the like the SNL skit. Um, that they, they did on Worlds, you know, uh, a year ago, which was entertaining, but like not really how we want esports or Riot esports presented uh, to kind of a, a mainstream world. So um, I, I think we've been working really hard with them to make sure that uh, we're presented in a way that, you know, feels really good for the people who, you know, put their blood, sweat and tears uh, into kind of all the all the things that we all do every day. Well, I was going to ask about that, uh, especially because, I, I already see the Reddit comments now and the, the Twitter reactions and stuff in my mind. And it's a word that I hate, but I know is used frequently is cringe. Cringe. How do you how do you make sure that this is not cringe? It sounds like you guys are already doing that. But I, I guess, uh, you know, with a project like this, I can imagine it being difficult because um, it, it being such a high profile thing going on uh, a streaming service. There's probably a desire to make it so that like this is not just the LCS fans that will watch and enjoy it, but it's it's exciting for a broader audience. But on the other hand, I'm wondering how much fans should have their expectations pulled down a little bit where like maybe there's some creative license that might be need to be done in order to 
to make people to not have to explain like blue side, red side, and uh, yeah. you know a bunch of different things, right? I, I wouldn't expect like a super deep dive into the strategy behind League of Legends, right? Think of this more as like Braveheart or the Patriot. It is a story being told against a backdrop. So with the Mel story Gibson. with Mel Gibson. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. So, Glad to hear he's involved. Yeah. Um, although may, maybe not with some of the stuff he's had going on in his life, enough. but yes. yeah. Uh, but if, if you think about more of a, you know, the Lolly sports, the LCS where we're a backdrop for a story that's being told, the uh, main character uh, is, is a, a, a bot laner. Uh, there's conflict with the bot lane and the support, right? Like there is a story that I think a lot of League of Legends fans will look at and say like, oh, I, I get that, right? Or like, I've seen that in pro play or I felt that in my solo queue games without this being kind of an exposition on League of Legends. Does that yes. make sense? Yes. Oh, the one question is, will it be as entertaining uh, and as real as Breaking Point? Because I feel like that's going to be the thing to, that they'll have to compare <laughs> against this, right? Yeah, uh, I, I think you'll feel some uh, breaking point flares in there. But, gotcha. Uh, okay. The the goal is to be able to tell a story that if you know nothing about esports and League of Legends, you sit down and find really entertaining and a good introduction to our world. But at the same time, if you're uh, a lot esports fan and LCS fan, you should tune in and expect to see a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of like you know kind of winks uh, at our own audience, so they feel really welcome in the in the story that's being told. They're gonna film at the LCS arena. They would have been filming uh, at the Prudential Center had we not had to cancel that. Uh, so, you know, there's I, I think there's going to be a lot of points of the story that feel real uh, for our audience. I, I don't know how you eliminate the, the cringe factor altogether. Right. I think it's it, it is just there's always going to be someone who looks at some scene, some storyline, some character. And they're like, oh, this this sucks. But, you know, you, you do your best to tell uh, a really entertaining story and make it feel really resonant for for new audiences and our core audience as well. So it sounds like you, you said they're going to film. So I assume that development is right now where where oh, it sounds like maybe a lot of the writing has been done, but this, the filming has not started? Uh, yeah, filming starts soon. Uh, I think the entire cast is like just about together. Um, scripts are done or, or like, you know, in pretty good shape. So they're, that's kind of their, the point in their, their production cycle. Uh, how should, should we expect cameos, I guess? Uh, are there going to be – because obviously it feels like there's a lot of opportunity here for us to see – um, I know there was that Ballers episode previously where we'd seen some of the players show up and all that. So I don't know if there's going to be anything like that. Yeah, I would definitely expect to see some familiar faces in it, whether they're talent side or uh, pro side, you know, probably still an open question. Uh, but I, yeah, I would I would definitely expect those kind of Easter eggs uh, uh, sprinkled around. Gotcha. OK. So how how did this all come about originally? Because I know you said that you guys had had discussions previously, but I don't know who approached you. Is this like Riot being like, oh, we think this would be great, or they approached you? How did it all start? Yeah, we started our conversations with Tony and Dan. I don't know how to be two years ago. Uh, they were working with Funny or Die, still are working with Funny or Die, um, and they came to us along with CBS and said, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're we finished American Vandals. We're kind of looking to tell our next story, and we think that. Lolly Sports and the LCS specifically present a really good background for that. They gave us a really entertaining pitch. We hear a lot of people who come in and kind of pitch uh, like the esports story back to us and finding people that you can trust to go out and tell that story to others. is really difficult. Um, but they gave a, you know, they gave us a half hour, hour presentation that was, you know, kind of a high level walkthrough of the story they wanted to tell, but it was sprinkled in with, you know, pictures of uh, Dan in a uh, Fizz onesie in the front row of the LCS arena or uh, him, you know, talking to, you know, him and Poe Belter in a selfie uh, where they had some conversation at, at All Stars, right? And it was, I think for them, their attempt to show us that like, hey, we get this. Uh, and Like we don't get it the way you get it, Riot, but we are like we're we're students and we want to learn and we've immersed ourselves in uh, in the scene and kind of, you know, want to want to keep going. So uh, that was impactful for us. We liked the pitch. We thought the story was good. Um, they're they're clearly very funny guys. I think they're going to write a very funny story for us. So, uh, yeah, I think I mean, the overall, that's the way it came together in the beginning. What is the, the timing for this? Like, when should people expect for it to, to show up? Uh, I believe the release date is slated for next year. I don't have the uh, I don't have the month uh, in front of me now. Uh, but this is not something that we're going to see like two or three years out. Uh, hopefully, it's it's next year. Yeah, I, that's that's 
That's my understanding. Okay. okay. So don't, so if it doesn't show up next year, right, I'm just going to blame COVID yeah, anyway. Yeah, okay. So it'll be fine. Yeah. Fair enough. Moving target, I guess. I mean, yeah. it's, it is understandable. I know that a lot of the, the TV shows and all that stuff, they get announced and then you kind of don't exactly. I'm still waiting on season two of The Witcher, for instance. But um, so so this this is something that you guys are going to be doing. I guess uh, should we, whenever it comes out, have you guys talked at all yet about presumably it might be coming out during the middle of the season. Is there going to be any kind of like crossover marketing stuff? I don't I don't know if there's anything we should. Should, should we expect a fun for a for fun game against the the team, the fictional team from the, the series? I, you know, I, I don't know what the launch plans are going to wind up looking like. It'll obviously matter kind of when it, it crosses over. Um, you know, like I could see a world where it crosses over our LCS championship and we can air the first episode in the arena. I could also see it like not lining up like that at all. So uh, I think as we begin to, to figure those things out, we certainly like – we want the show to kind of come in with a bang. We want to be able to uh, talk about the show on broadcast. We want to be able to introduce it to our audience as well. So uh, just be a matter of kind of how it, how it lines up and what's available to us at the time. Very good. So it sounds like if people want to learn more or like get ready to watch it, they should just stay tuned. Yeah, I think that's a pretty, pretty good instruction. Very good. Well, thank you so much uh, for chatting with me about this. Very exciting, very interesting to see how it's going to go about and who's going to make cameos and how everything's going to unfold. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and for everyone else, you can check out my coverage of all things television uh, right here on my YouTube channel. Catch you later. We are headed into finals uh, and this is my final outro. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to make a ton more of these, uh, but it is not the final time that I will promote Alienware, our amazing sponsor alienware.com slash travis check out the link in the description just do it all right it's a great way to celebrate finals by celebrating my sponsors that's what i'm doing here anyway uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do that that also helps and there's some names scrolling across the bottom of the screen that have subscribed recently you can end up on that list if you do too so thank you so much uh for watching this video and we'll catch you next time